Are you dealing with a narcissist at work and you need strategies to overcome that toxicity? In this video, I am going to give you five unbelievable strategies to overcome that toxicity at work. This is a must watch for you if you are dealing with a toxic person at work. Watch this now. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am a narcissist negotiation expert. I'm also an attorney who's been recognized by US News as one of the top 1% of attorneys in the country. And I've also written a couple of best selling books, including a brand new one that is out right now. And if you order it at slaythebully.com, you will get access to all kinds of really cool things, including my private launch team. So make sure you go and do that right now. And if you're brand new to this channel, then make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. And if you are coming back to my channel, then welcome back. All right, guys. So I am so happy that you are here because we are all about personal growth, development, and overcoming toxic people, which is what we're going to be talking about today is dealing with toxic coworkers, colleagues, clients, whoever it is that you're dealing with in a day-to-day -day basis, they can make your life freaking miserable. So here's the first strategy. The first strategy is maintaining boundaries. I always say step one, don't run. Step two, make a U-turn. Step three, break. Free. So the first thing that you have to do, have to do, have to do, have to do is maintain boundaries. So clear boundaries when you are dealing with somebody toxic is so, so, so important. Whether it's a boss or a colleague or a subordinate, whoever it is, toxic behavior can be so contagious. And you always have the right to say you have, you have to speak to me in a respectful manner. No matter who it is, you have the right to say that. And if we don't set limits, it might affect our own well-being. You dictate how people treat you by how you carry yourself, how you show up for yourself. You know, there's a, an old saying, like, if you don't want to be a doormat, get off the floor. So limit unnecessary interactions and avoid engaging in, you know, situations that are going to be putting yourself in places where you, you can't have boundaries, right? Don't engage in gossip. Don't engage in negative conversations. Stay professional. When you engage in situations where you're not going to be able to have boundaries, it puts you in situations that heightens the chance that you're not going to be able to have those boundaries in place. Stay professional, stay focused on your work, and it sends a powerful message that you're not one that tolerates toxic behavior. Setting boundaries means that you know when to step away from toxic conversations. Don't allow yourself to be dragged into toxic conversations or situations where you're not going to be a person who just sets the example for other people in the workplace or other people that you work with. That's number one for setting boundaries. The next one is seeking support from others. Dealing with toxic coworkers can feel very, very isolating. But remember, you're not alone in this Seek support from people that you trust. If there's somebody else in that environment within the workplace that you work with that you can trust, that's great. Just stick with them. Sharing your experience can be therapeutic. Remember, like attracts like. The more that you can surround yourself with people that are positive the better it can be. You are the product of the top five people that you spend the most time with. Spend more time with those people. 
All right. Def- you know, defend your light with your life. They can maybe offer valuable insight on how to cope with those challenges as well. Confiding in them can maybe help you also not getting into gossip, not saying, Hey, you know, this person is that way, but saying, Hey, how can I stay strong? How can I stay positive? How can I be the example? You know, how can you be lifted up in these situations, looking at how you can be higher, the better person wearing that white hat? And if you can't find support within your organization, then maybe you have to stay out of that organization and find support elsewhere. And, you know, maybe that's not the organization for you. And maybe eventually you need to find a different organization or reevaluate where it is that you are always looking toward defending your light with your life, being that better person, not allowing yourself to succumb to being dragged down into the mud. If you need additional support or help, we do have a sponsor on this channel, which is BetterHelp. You can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung to get therapy if that's what you need. It is a sponsor on this channel, which means that we receive commissions. It doesn't cost you any extra. We just want you to have the help and support that you need. I also have phrases for disarming narcissists, which you can grab at disarmthenarc.com if that is something that you need. Highly recommend that you get those. You can use them for emails or text messages, that sort of thing. We also have a private Facebook group that you can join, which is Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. I recommend that you get that or join that as well. Are you ready to transform lives at the deepest level while also earning money and taking your career to the highest heights? Well, if so, then my brand new slay master high conflict negotiation certification training is exactly what you have been looking for get ready to acquire the essential skills necessary to guide your already existing clients or team members through the intricacies of dealing with challenging personalities or you can become a brand new certified coach and ignite an amazing new career and start off by knowing that you can make a real difference in people's lives. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung and I'm an attorney and I've been named a best lawyer in America by US News and I'm also a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert. I'm also the author of a best-selling book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win and I'm the founder of the Slay Method of Negotiating with High Conflict Personalities. I am a certified coach also and I as a certified master coach in the slay method, you will be able to guide your clients or your team members through the complexity of dealing with high conflict or narcissistic personalities, including using the power of my proven slay method. I've literally helped thousands of people across the globe with this method and it has saved lives in negotiating people from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And you will be able to help them do the exact same thing into finding lives of freedom and ultimately respect, acknowledgement, and that feeling of knowing that you have helped people at their deepest level, at their deepest level of their soul, and you will be able to be paid for that. And it's not just about helping others, by the way, it's about investing in yourself and your own future. By joining this training, you will be investing in your own professional growth, enhancing your own quality of life and unlocking limitless earning potential. Are you ready to take charge of your destiny and help shape the destinies of others while making more money doing it, then join my free workshop, High Conflict Negotiation Certification, Boost Your Authority and Your Income. Discover why high conflict coaches are in huge demand right now, both personally and professionally. Learn how to coach people through crises, master emotional triggers, and conquer their fears 
all while boosting your authority and your income. Don't miss out on this exclusive life-changing opportunity. Just click the link to sign up for this free workshop right now. Just be careful about who you open yourself up to. If you're trusting people, make sure that there's somebody that you can trust. Otherwise, you might want to look into using other resources like self-help books or audio books and things like that. The next one is communicating assertively, communicating assertively. When you stand in your power, it really makes a huge difference. People will think what you tell them to think. You know, when I was a lawyer for a while, and then I went into being a financial planner for a while, and then I went back to being a lawyer, and I was just starting my practice, and I was so nervous that the people in the community that I lived in were going to think that I was such a flake. And the business coach that I was working with at the time said, people will think what you tell them to think. And she said, you know, you can tell them to think that you are a flake, or you can tell them to think that you're the only lawyer who has a financial background. So therefore you are actually more qualified than any other lawyer in town because you actually have a financial background. Which story would you like to tell? And I remember thinking, oh, maybe I'll tell that story, which is exactly what I did. And I embraced my background instead. And within a couple of years, I actually had the top family law practice in the area representing billionaires and celebrities and all kinds of people who very clearly were not going to be hiring a flake. People will think what you tell them to think. I, I came in, I stood in my power, and that's what you also need to do. Communicate assertively, stand in your power. That makes a huge difference in how people will see you as well. When you find yourself in unavoidable interactions with toxic people, toxic coworkers, assertive communication is the key. Express your boundaries clearly. Let them know who you are. Don't be confrontational. You can say, I value our working relationship, but I need a more positive environment to thrive. This is not working for me. You can use I statements rather than you statements. You know, you statements tend to feel like you're blaming somebody. You can say, you know, this is not working for me. Your approach is not working for me, you know, so that the person doesn't feel attacked, making them maybe perhaps more receptive to change. That helps to disarm narcissists. I have a whole video on words that narcissists hate, you might want to check that out because maybe refrain from using those words. The next one is um, document incidents. Make sure that you're always documenting things that are happening because having evidence is going to be vital when you're dealing with toxicity at work and keeping records of incidents or you know anything that you witness because down the road, if you have to have a conversation with a superior or something that happens, dates, times, specific details will definitely help you. Documentation is always a powerful resource when you need to escalate incidents to maybe human resources or higher management. Every time you, you encounter toxic behavior, record it, use a dedicated journal, with timestamps, it, it can be very, very invaluable when you go to present this information to the powers that be. You want to have concrete examples of what you've been dealing with, because then if you can create summaries, once again, the volume of that can be extremely powerful and persuasive down the road. When people are looking at repeated incidents and they see that it's not just an isolated incident, it can be very, very powerful. When, when people can see an email trail of interactions, it can be powerful to see that you've been the good one, you've worn the good hat, you've worn the, you've worn the white hat, and that you've been respectful, that you've been the one who tried. It helps a lot. If you understand this and you get this and it makes sense to you, give me a makes sense in the comments 
something that you can do, put that in the comments. Makes sense to me. I can do this. Put that in the comments below. So, and then point five is focus on personal well being. So important to self care, take care of yourself. Your well being, of course, should always be a priority for yourself when you're dealing with a toxic person. Toxic coworkers can definitely be emotionally draining. It can be extremely traumatic. So make sure you engage in something that can, you know, where you can take care of yourself outside of work, take care of your physical well-being, your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, your even your spiritual well-being, so that you feel refreshed, energized, renewed, restored, breathing exercises, something that's going to help you pivot your mind, take care of your mind, whether it's meditation, yoga, gratitude journals, being with people who are going to lift you, whatever it is that is going to help you so that you can stay strong is so, so, so important. Mindfulness exercises. You want to stay grounded. You want to stay focused. You want to be able to observe your emotions almost like a third party so that you aren't triggered because if your emotions take over, then you will be finding yourself in a place that you perhaps don't want to be at work. Those are the five ways to overcome toxic coworkers. I hope you found this helpful. Which one did you find the most helpful? I would love to know. Drop me a comment below. I'd love to have your feedback and know which one you love the most which one that you, you're you gonna start incorporating first. If you love this video, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, share it out on your social media, share it out to a friend, send an email around to a friend so that they can see this too, because this is so important. People are suffering. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to this channel that you go ahead and do that now, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you can get more empowering content like this when you're dealing with toxic people, difficult people, high conflict people. Thank you as always for being part of this empowering community. We, when we rise, we all rise. The next video that I want you to watch, very much highly recommend that you watch, is using these killer comebacks to put narcissists in their place. That will also help you when you're dealing with toxic people in your life, toxic coworkers, whoever it is that you're dealing with that's toxic. All right, killer comebacks to put narcissists in their place. I'm Rebecca Zung. I'm so glad that you were here with me today and I will see you in that next video. Remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I'll see you in that next video.